issue. And uh, it's your time to shine and be recognized by your peers. But before we do that, um, we have a very special guest uh, that's with us today. And uh, he's going to take the next 15 minutes of your time and talk to you a little bit about um, diabetes. And Kevin Fleischer is in seventh grade. He is from the San Antonio area. He is 14 years old. And he's a National Junior Honor Society member. Yeah. He works on the Congressional Youth Leadership Council for Texans, and his primary role for JRS is to raise money. He, he plays on Adrian Rodriguez's baseball team, and he's a, a middle infielder, and apparently pretty good with a bat, but I'm hearing it. So uh, uh, he actually just uh, recently played in the Little League World Series. So uh, Kevin.
My book helped classmates to understand more about what I go through and explained why eating snacks and pies for me is normal. But they were all still quite fascinated that I gave myself shots every day and pricked my arms, legs, and fingers to get blood for sugar release. As time went by and I transitioned into middle school, I quickly became more and more out of reach for my parents. I started to become very independent with my monitoring, planning, and scheduling. Aside from having more knowledge about my diabetes and how to successfully live with and through it, I had a special piece of intricate and sophisticated technology that has completely changed my life and I even have it here with me today. This technology is the Continuous Glucose Monitor, which checks my blood sugar and sends readings from an infusion site transmitter on my skin to the CGM receiver in my pocket. Although I was still faced with difficult obstacles that get in, my, that get in the way of everyday things, this monitor tremendously decreased the impact of big highs and dangerous lows. I can now stay after school for sports without much worry that my shirt will suddenly crash or go too high because my monitor can alert me so that I can make a correction and continue to perform at my prime without feeling bad. The only downside to the CGM is that it looks too much like a phone. So once in a while when I pull it out of my pocket to check my readings, I'll get the look from a substitute or a regular teacher along the words, I'd love to have a new cell phone, Mr. Fleischer. Why don't you bring it up to my desk? <laughs> But then I explained to them that it's my medical advice and everything's okay. <laughs> Although the CGM has made a huge change in my life, I was still faced with difficult times that require strenuous planning so that I can continue doing my best. Sometimes at school, I'll have early band sectionals or before school basketball practice. During the school year, seventh graders often have to come at school extra early for band sports. Having to be at school at 6 a.m. may mean waking up at 5.40 for most kids. They can get ready quickly and just leave for school. Later on, they can eat a cinnamon roll, pop tart, pop tart, or a pancake corn dog at school for breakfast. But for me, it means waking up at 5 o'clock, eating a big breakfast of substantial protein and carbohydrates, and then going to school feeling prepared and full. The reasons why I must manage myself like this and have a very healthy diet, unlike some of my friends, is that first, I don't like unhealthy foods, and secondly, because uh, with diabetes, it's better to be on a set schedule so that I don't get thrown off track by our people's blood glucose levels. During my school day, it is a little less difficult to manage my blood sugar because then I'm literally on a set schedule, so I really don't have to adapt much to the situations of the day because they're all, all almost the same. My teachers and administrators have given me a lot of freedom and that has also helped me enormously to get what I need to get done without causing disruption to my class. The great things about the technology I have, and the technology I may have in the future, is that sometimes people don't even realize I'm diabetic because the tools that I have work so swiftly and smoothly that I, so that I don't have to struggle with checking my sugar levels 6 to 12 times a day or guess what my blood glucose trends are. Throughout my years in middle school and almost all of elementary school, I've really enjoyed being an advocate for the JDRF. I started advocating in the first grade when I met with Senator Cornyn. Since then, I've met with many other congressmen and senators in the act of asking for more support for funding of diabetes research. This is done in the hopes of improving lives and, try, and trying to find a cure for diabetes. Some examples of the advocacy which I've participated in include giving a speech on World Diabetes Day while in the third grade, being recognized on the floor of the Texas Senate for my advocacy, and finally, this summer I will represent Texas in the 2013 Children's Congress in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Government advocacy has been very important to me, and it's been vital in bringing about more changes to better the lives of type 1 diabetics. But my family and I haven't stopped there. We've been a part of countless events and fundraisers to spread awareness of type 1 and to raise money for research. Some examples of the events we've joined in include the annual Walk for Cure, hosted at the Almodome, and the GAORF Gala, which was hosted last Saturday night, right here at the JW Marriott, as it does each year on the day right before Mother's Day. The thing that I love to see most is how our contributions towards supporting the JAORF are put into action, because that's what we're doing it for. 
The money that we've raised and given to the JRF has been money well spent, and that is evident by the things you've accomplished over the years of research. We've gone from bovine derived insulin, boiling and reusing blast syringes, and inaccurate urine test strips to clinically accurate electronic meters, dial dose pens with short pen needles, insulin pumps, and continuous glucose monitors. By funding scientific research, we can complete a lot of things that will positively affect the lives of diabetics. Even though we haven't found a cure yet, we're on the right path of slowly making diabetes fade away from the lives of thousands of people across the nation. We've made many medical advances, and some of the latest projects that the JDRF has been working on are the Closed Loop Artificial Pancreas Project, which is a CGM and the insulin pump working together, the embedded beta cell delivery system, and smart or encapsulated glucose response of insulin, which can reduce the large number of shots I need per day to just one. These tools would make things much easier for not just me, but diabetics everywhere. With exciting new advancements, I may not be faced with as many challenges as I now have, especially with my busy schedule. But since we haven't fully understood how to create and apply these developments, I try my best with what I have, which is still amazing equipment. Even though the CGM helps to smooth out some of the rough patches of my daily routine, I still have to take time for my activities to get my sugar back on track. For instance, during my Little League All-Star season this last summer, we had three-hour baseball practices under the hot sun. Not only did this take a lot out of the players, because their energy was being drained, but I really had to make a lot of sacrifices so that my sugar stayed through off course and plummeted. I remember missing some important game time scenarios and giving up my spot to someone else while I was in the dugout, either giving myself insulin or drinking juice. But as our season continued, our talent improved, and our skills working together got better, our team earned a rare and golden prize, making it to the Little League World Series in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. While we were there, we were having so much fun that I almost completely forgot about my monitor. One of the worst days I've ever had in terms of out-of-hand blood sugars started one morning during our trip. Without warning, the coaches woke everybody up late and said, oh well, you guys won't be eating breakfast. Our coaches told us that we were all leaving in 15 minutes to go practice, so we needed to start getting dressed. My sugar levels were low that morning, so I told my coaches that I need to go down to eat breakfast. But when I went down, they weren't serving anymore. So I ended up eating some of what we had in the coach's room, which was a bunch of straight carbs. We went to go practice, and my sugar skyrocketed. I fell off and I started to take large doses of insulin to bring my sugars back down. That day, my, sugars level, my sugar levels didn't go down to a normal level until it was time to go to sleep. But I was the only one who couldn't sleep, because I had a huge migraine all night, and I eventually vomited. That one unfortunate time, taught me to be more independent and stay only on my schedule. As a diabetic, I must really watch what I eat and eat something sustainable in the mornings, like protein and some carbohydrates, so my sugars remain as consistent as possible. That is only one of the many examples of challenges that I'm faced with on a daily basis. I relate my life with Type 1 to another diabetic, my role model, Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson played baseball with vigor and determination through hatred and discrimination. He was faced with many obstacles that he had to overcome in order to break the color barrier. And I also have to be determined that diabetes won't hold me back from anything that I want to accomplish, even though the place is huge and sometimes overwhelming challenges before me. Having type 1 diabetes is a struggle that takes a strong-minded person to live through. Although I'm faced with many challenges in my life due to type 1, I do everything I can so that doesn't slow me down. Thank you again very much for having me here to speak in front of you today and for all of your contributions towards research for people like me.
and the drone needle that's in my interstitial fluid. And every five minutes, it sends a reading uh, to my monitor. And this tells me my blood sugar levels. And it also tells me what my trends are. So it tells me if I'm going up, down, if I'm steady, and if I'm going up fast or really fast. So it's, it's pretty amazing. And is it, are they hard to get? Are they expensive? Is interest kind of good? <laughs> 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 <laughs>